Today, we are going to learn about monosaccharides and stereoisomerism. Stereoisomers are those molecules having the same molecular formula. They have the same atomic connections, they have a different three-dimensional shape, and are interchanged only by breaking bonds. There is more to understanding the structure of a monosaccharide than knowing the number of carbon atoms than it has and whether it is an aldehyde or a keto. We must also identify which particular stereoisomer is present. Now, for instance, we have these two stereoisomers. So we have cis-2-butene and trans-2-butene. Stereoisomers like this two exist as a result of hindered rotation about covalent bonds. They have the same molecular formula. They have the same atomic connections. They have a three dimensional shape which are different from each other and it can only be interchanged by breaking these bonds. An important property of many molecules including most carbohydrates is the property of handedness. Everything has a mirror image. So if you hold your left hand up to a mirror, you see its mirror image which matches your right hand. If you turn your palms down and toward each other, one hand is the mirror image of the other. Now, if you try looking at the palms of your hands, your thumbs are now on opposite sides. If you then place your right hand over your left hand, you cannot match up all the parts of the hands, the palms, the back, the thumbs, and the little fingers. The thumbs and the little fingers can be matched, but then, the palms or box of your hands are facing each other. Your hands are mirror images that cannot be superimposed on each other. When the mirror images cannot be completely matched, they are called non-superimposable. Mirror images can either be superimposable or non-superimposable. We define superimposable mirror images as images that coincide at all points when the images are laid upon each other, just like this example of a flask which has no markings. So the mirror image can be superimposed to the original image. Non-superimposable mirror images are those images where not all points coincide when the images are laid upon each other, just like our left and right hand. The term chiral is used to describe objects that cannot be superimposed on their mirror image. So our left and right hand are chiral objects. Left and right shoes are chiral. Left and right-handed golf clubs are also chiral. What is a chiral center? An atom in a molecule that has four different groups bonded to it in a tetrahedral orientation is a chiral center. Let us look into the simplest carbohydrate for an instance, glyceraldehyde. If you will look at this molecule, there are actually four groups bonded to the central carbon atom. So we have CHO, we have hydrogen, we have the OH or the hydroxyl group, and we have CH2OH. These are four different groups which make glyceraldehyde a chiral molecule. Any molecule containing a chiral center or carbon is a chiral molecule and will exist as a pair of enantiomers. Now, what are the guidelines for identifying chiral centers? So, these guidelines can help us to identify if there is a chiral center present in the molecule, making the molecule chiral. First, carbon atom with multiple bonds do not have a chiral center. So in this example, we have here carbon as a central atom or as one central atom, and we notice that there are three 
groups bonded to carbon and we have here a multiple bond. So this means that there would be no four groups that can attach to carbon. Therefore, carbon here, this carbon is not chiral center. Carbon atom with two similar groups bonded to it is not chiral center. Here, we have this carbon and this carbon is bonded to four groups of atom. It is bonded to hydrogen and it is also bonded to this group over here. However, we have two methyl groups or two CH3 groups which are similar groups. So this means that this carbon is not a chiral center. Carbon atoms in a ring system. So here, this carbon over here is not a chiral center, therefore this molecule is a chiral. This one, we have a chiral carbon because the two halves of the ring are different from each other and therefore there are two different groups of atoms bonded to our carbon which makes carbon chiral and which makes the molecule chiral. This time, let us take a look into this molecule for example. Let us identify if there is any chiral center present. Let us start with carbon 1. Carbon 1 is bonded to 2 hydrogen and therefore cannot be chiral. Even though carbon-1 is bonded to four groups of atoms, but the presence of two similar group of atoms will not make it chiral. Carbon-2 is bonded to four different groups. So we have the OH here, we have the um, CH2OH, we have hydrogen, and we have this group over here, which are four different groups. And therefore, carbon number two is a chiral center. Carbon number three is also bonded to four different groups. So we have this group over here. Bromine is another group. Chlorine is another group. And CH3 is another different group. So that means carbon three is also a chiral center. Carbon four is bonded to three hydrogen atoms and therefore cannot be chiral. Since the molecule has chiral centers, it is chiral molecule or it exhibits handedness. The presence of even one chiral center will make the whole molecule chiral. What are enantiomers? Stereoisomers that are mirror images are called enantiomers. This means that they have the same molecular formulas but different spatial arrangements of their atoms. So no amount of rotation can convert one of these structures into the other. Glyceraldehyde is again an example and here we have a pair of its enantiomer. So we have L or left handed glyceraldehyde and D glyceraldehyde or right handed glyceraldehyde. The D and L designations for the handedness of the two members of an enantiomeric pair come from the Latin words dextro, which means right, and levo, which means left. Now what happens when there is more than one chiral center present? As the number of chiral carbon atoms in a molecule increases, so does the number of stereoisomers that can exist. So this is a general formula used to predict the maximum number of stereoisomers possible for a molecule, where n is the number of chiral carbon atoms. So that means if there are two chiral carbon atoms present in one molecule, then the maximum number of stereoisomers is four. Now what about diastereomers? Diastereomers are those stereoisomers that are not related as mirror images and are therefore not enantiomers. They are not mirror images and non-superimposable. So just like this example, these two stereoisomers 
have the same molecular formula. They also have the same arrangement of atoms, but are not mirror images and are therefore diastereomers. So if we will look at the example given, the molecule on the left has all its bromine atom on the right side, while on the other molecule, um, the bromine molecule are separated. One is on the left side and the other is on the right side. Another type of stereoisomers are epimers. Epimers are actually diastereomers that differ only in the configuration at one chiral center. So let us take a look at one example. So here we have this two molecules which are diastereomers since they are not mirror images and they are non-superimposable but specifically called epimers. If we will look at these two images or at these two molecules, the positioning of the OH groups, of these two OH groups, are on the same side. But then, on this chiral center, the position of the OH group differs. So therefore, this is an example of a pair of epimers.